Il senso religioso o l'esperienza religiosa è innanzitutto un fatto, un fenomeno obiettivo, un fatto reale, non è un'idea, innanzitutto non è un modo di sentire, non solo si tratta di un fatto, di un avvenimento, ma del fatto più imponente e più inestirpabile della storia dell'uomo più imponente più vasto che neanche il fenomeno dell'amore dell'uomo e della donna che neanche il fenomeno del rapporto tra genitori e figli perché il senso religioso è un avvenimento che pone, che afferma o che ricerca l'orizzonte entro il quale acquisti senso anche il rapporto tra l'uomo e la donna, anche il rapporto tra genitori e figli. Perciò è più vasto, perfino di quelli. Simoncelli.
Il senso religioso o l'esperienza religiosa è innanzitutto un fatto, un fenomeno obiettivo, un fatto reale, non è un'idea, innanzitutto non è un modo di sentire, non solo si tratta di un fatto, di un avvenimento, ma del fatto più imponente e più inestirpabile della storia dell'uomo. Più imponente, più vasto, che neanche il fenomeno dell'amore dell'uomo e della donna, che neanche il fenomeno del rapporto tra genitori e figli. Perché il senso religioso è un avvenimento che pone, che afferma o che ricerca l'orizzonte entro il quale acquisti senso anche il rapporto tra l'uomo e la donna, anche il rapporto tra genitori e figli. Perciò è più vasto, perfino di quelli. religioso o l'esperienza religiosa è innanzitutto un fatto, un fenomeno obiettivo, un fatto reale, non è un'idea, innanzitutto non è un modo di sentire, non solo si tratta di un fatto, di un avvenimento, ma del fatto più imponente e più inestirpabile della storia dell'uomo più imponente più vasto che neanche il fenomeno dell'amore dell'uomo e della donna che neanche il fenomeno del rapporto tra genitori e figli perché il senso religioso è un avvenimento che pone, che afferma o che ricerca l'orizzonte entro il quale acquisti senso anche il rapporto tra l'uomo e la donna, anche il rapporto tra genitori e figli. Perciò è più vasto, perfino di quelli.
short circuit, Marco Simoncelli. civiltà dell'amore, fratelli e sorelle, costruite senza stancarvi mai questa civiltà. Lavorate per questo, pregate per questo, soffrite per questo. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. It's nice to see uh, so many people in the audience, uh, and you're very warm. And we want to see you at the uh, Misano Adriatico uh, Grand Prix, uh, where Marco will be one of the uh, leaders from the 8th to the 10th of September. Together with uh, Marco Bezzecchi, MotoGP rider for Ducati, who are 46 racing team. Together with us, uh, we have Andrea Corsini, the regional councillor for mobility and transport of the Emilia Romagna region. Um, I'm a Sky commentator, so I will be uh, uh, in uh, Misano, but I want to immediately give the floor to Marco Bezzetti who uh, came from very far away to come here. He lives uh, very far away from Rimini. Tell us everything about it. Hi, everyone. How's it going? Well, um, I live here. I live here just around the corner. So you came very fast because you went very fast or because you live like 500 meters from here? No, I took my mother first and then it took me uh, two or three minutes more, but uh, very little. Hello to Daniela, his mother, Laura, the uh, press officer uh, of the uh, VR46 racing team, and to uh, your father, uh, Vito, who is now working. Uh, with just uh, a few meters from here. I found out something from your mother. In your house, there has never been a bike until uh, uh, you were born, uh, until uh, you started racing on the mini bikes, uh, and then there was a champion. Uh, how did you uh, start uh, uh, this career? Well, my parents and uh, my family has always had a passion for bikes, uh, but my father didn't ride a bike. Uh, so I was the first one. I was the first one. That was a bit different in the family. But I've always had a passion for that. Uh, you know that there's a lot of passion for bikes and for engines in general in this area. And so. Uh, Let's say it was not easy, but uh, the passion came out very easily. And for those of you who are passionate, like you, in an, in an area like this where you have the Motor Valley, which is full of uh, human excellences, uh, 
and also uh, full of uh, companies, events, and circuits uh, that uh, uh, certainly can uh, promote passion for bikes. Thank you very much. Uh, hello to uh, the uh, audience. So, I'm here together with Marco Bezzecchi uh, just a few days before uh, the um, um, Grand Prix in uh, Misano from the 8th to the 10th of September. It's going to be a great party because Emilia Romagna is the land of uh, uh, bikes, but also it's the land of uh, major pilots. To be precise, actually, Emilia, you know that Emilia Romagna is a land, is a region that has a lot of excellencies. In em Emilia uh, is the Motor Valley, not just uh, uh, for Italy, but worldwide, because in just uh, 100 kilometers between Bologna and Modena, uh, and pa Parma included, uh, there are companies producing the most beautiful uh, cars and bikes throughout the world, Ducati, Ferrari, Maserati, Lamborghini, Pagani uh, in Parma. And in the past few years, uh, they have become not only a major product, uh, uh, making Emilia Romagna famous worldwide, but also they have become uh, a major tourist attraction because uh, all these uh, major companies and international brands uh, have museums. Every year, uh, they receive visitors from uh, people throughout the world of uh, big fans of uh, cars and bikes, and they come to Emilia Romagna to visit these museums and to visit the companies and to see with their own eyes uh, how these uh, uh, extraordinary products are produced in the Motor Valley. Romagna uh, uh, doesn't have uh, companies producing cars or bikes. But in any case, uh, it is the land of uh, famous pilots, uh, and we have here an example. Now, i show you what I know, what I know uh, about bikes after Giacomo Agostini, Marco Lucchinelli, Franco Uncini, Valentino Rossi, of course, uh, and Pecco Bagnaia. Uh, I think that uh, time is ripe uh, for somebody from Romagna uh, to become the big champion of motorbikes. So, yeah, it's quite normal to have champions in this land because uh, here we have passion. It's uh, in our DNA. We are the land of engines. We are the land of uh, cars and bikes for a good food. This is part and parcel of our DNA, of our history. And so uh, this has uh, uh, some consequences because we have champions. And since they are kids, these champions have a passion and a love for bikes. And so it's nice. It's to live uh, and to be born in Emilia Romagna, and it's nice for me to deal with this wonderful region and to work for it. Um, now, we're going to uh, watch a video uh, telling us, uh, uh, showing us about how Marco Bezzecchi started uh, uh, racing. Uh, so, uh, your father is there working with the trucks, uh, but now he's also working on bikes. Uh, you uh, brought him with you. Marco, tell us uh, how you uh, started with the mini bikes. Now, this is uh, the video. OK, it was very well. I uh, uh, raced with a uh, uh, mini bike. It was a wonderful race. Um, I was the first one, so it went well. This is Marco Bezzecchi. Uh, he also had a pole position, and Fabio Di Gian Antonio. They came first and second, and then Fabio Spiranelli uh, was third. And now, at the end of the race, uh, let's see the three protagonists. I'm really tired. My arm hurts. It's sore. I was really having fun, and then uh, there was a red flag. But luckily enough, uh, I managed to get through the finish line. I'm very happy, and hopefully tomorrow is going to be the same. OK, Marco, are you ready for this new season as a favorite? I don't know whether I'm going to be the favorite one in this season, but I'm looking forward to it. What's the new bike like? Well, the bike is uh, perfect. Unfortunately, this week, and uh, I had a problem, and so uh, um, I cannot endure the whole race. but. Uh, 
Hopefully, I'll do my best. Who's your worst enemy? Uh, my first enemy is, uh, in my opinion, your teammate. And then uh, there are all enemies. But the most important thing is that we are friends outside, outside racing. L'importante è che di fuori It's important to be friends outside racing. This is what you said at the end of the video. Now, from uh, the uh, mini bikes uh, to the Italian Speed Championship, now you are in the Olympus. Uh, you are among the uh, uh, top three, four uh, pilots throughout the world. And uh, maybe you are also friends with them after racing. So. How difficult is it uh, to have uh, true friends uh, with uh, Bagnaia, Luca Marini, and with the other pilots uh, uh, in the racing world? Well, it's not easy to be friends and to make friends. Uh, ours uh, is a very individual sport. We're all fighting for victory for the same thing. So uh, we all want to win. We all want to be on a podium. So it's not easy. But I was helped uh, by the fact that uh, we've been knowing uh, one another for many years. I've been knowing them uh, because we were together in the academy. And then uh, we started racing together quite late uh, after we had met uh, a few years before. So we already were friends. And then uh, when you start racing, uh, it's uh, impossible to be friends with someone else. But uh, uh, you have to make a difference between the two. One thing is racing, and the other thing is real life, life outside racing. So we are adults now, so we are mature enough. Well, maybe not too much, but uh, Valentino Rossi, I think, uh, is a very good example. Uh, here, uh, 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 in the ranch, you uh, feel a sort of atmosphere uh, we, we, that is not always very competitive. We know that Valentino Rossi uh, had all enemies uh, while racing, so he has a sort of double soul. How do you perceive that? Well, uh, I mean, uh, we, we are all the same. You too. Well, you, you have to be that way. Uh, when you start racing, uh, uh, you have to be bad. You have to be naughty. I mean, uh, not uh, naughty in the real sense of the word, of the term, but uh, yeah, you, everyone wants to win. So, but when you're racing uh, and uh, you go fast uh, and uh, you're just under Beko Bagnaia, who, who that is your friend, uh, but at that time uh, you're running fast uh, and uh, what is at stake is very high, and you take risks. Uh, 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 do you talk to yourself? Or what do you say to yourself? Uh, how does it work? I mean, what do you feel? How do you feel like? Is that a, a game, or is it something more than that? Is it something difficult to manage? Sometimes I speak to myself while racing, quite often, but I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is, uh, well, maybe if I made a mistake, uh, I'm saying, okay, try to be more focused, or uh, uh, remember to uh, change gear, or do you sing? No, never. Okay, well, we 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 are not racing. We're just uh, riding a bike, so sometimes we're singing. But you don't sing. No, I don't sing. Well, I I I think uh, um, um, oh, about um, just staying focused. Okay, I want to ask something. What is the uh, most difficult enemy to overtake? Kekko. Because he's uh, really fast, so it's difficult to be behind him. He is the most difficult one to overtake. I just want to ask the councillor uh, whether uh, uh, Romagna, uh, where you have the largest number of pilots, the best pilots throughout the world, uh, is an engine. Are these pilots a sort of uh, uh, engine for tourism? I mean, do they attract the tourists? Well, uh, 
Uh, this year, uh, uh, there have been different unfavorable events, so to speak, uh, uh, bad weather, uh, the blue crab, the flooding, all possible events occurred this summer. But then we will have to see at the end of the season how that went. Uh, probably things will be less worse than the newspapers are saying. We'll see. We'll see at the end of the season. However, we are a major tourist destination. Over the past few years, we've grown a lot. In 2019, before COVID, we reached 60 million tourists. That was the top record in the tourist history of this region. In the past few years, Uh, 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 we have been uh, using, so to speak, many testimonials that were born in Emilia-Romagna to promote our excellencies in our land, our region. And we've also used many uh, uh, people, many sports people, uh, as testimonials. And uh, 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 maybe uh, there will be uh, uh, more ambassadors in the future. Maybe we also have a lot of chefs in the future, like Massimo Bottura. For years, uh, we've been close uh, um, working with uh, uh, Tomba Maxirena, who is from Rimini. He is the skipper of Luna Rossa, and he helps us uh, promote in Emilia Romagna the culture of the sea and sailing. So uh, ambassadors are very important because uh, uh, they show uh, 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 things in a proper way. They show things from a sports perspective, uh, which is one of our peculiarities. Emilia Romagna has been doing a lot of investments on sports recently. We are called the uh, National Sports Valley. This is the only region uh, hosting uh, uh, two world uh, championships in Misano and in Ipola for cars and for bikes. After uh, 15 years, uh, we have brought back Formula One to Emilia Romagna in Imola, and uh, up to 2026, we know that Imola will be hosting the Formula One Grand Prix. Unfortunately, this year, we couldn't do it because of the fl flooding. This is called Emilia Romagna Grand Prix. This is the only example uh, where a Grand Prix takes its name from a region. And uh, we will certainly continue after 2026. Uh, uh, the Davis Cup uh, um, and many other sports events uh, that uh, attract a lot of uh, tourists and visitors. And next year, Emilia Romagna uh, will be hosting uh, the uh, beginning of Tour de France, the uh, biggest cycling tour followed by a million people on television. After the World Cup and the Olympic Games, uh, the Tour de France uh, is the sports event that has uh, uh, the largest number of viewers throughout the world. So in Rimini, Cesenatico, Bologna, and Piacenza, these are the four cities involved, we will be hosting the Tour de France. And this is an extraordinary event, and therefore we will be under the limelight uh, worldwide. So we do have ambassadors uh, that are very important. Uh, Stefano Corsi, for example, is a cinema star, a major actor, famous worldwide. Uh, he is also an ambassador uh, in our TV uh, commercials, uh, and maybe uh, in the future uh, we will we may ask Marco Bezzecchi to become our ambassador. Not many people know that uh, Marco Bezzecchi is very fast while racing, but uh, where he has to go more than 250 kilometers fast, uh, he is even more enthusiastic. So he's very brave. He needs to be braver uh, than uh, uh, the standard. So. You are the bravest among the bravest. Stoner, who is a major champion, said, uh, uh, if there was no electronic device, Bezzecchi, out of his courage, out of his talent, uh, uh, would be the fastest one of all. So as for the question, 
Uh, what is your relation with the danger? Uh, do you ever think uh, that uh, after falling down, for example, uh, uh, you have to go back to your bike again and start racing again? Well, I think about it every now and then, uh, especially when I'm on my own at home. While racing, uh, I never think about it. I never think about uh, uh, dangers, the fact that I could uh, fall down, I could hurt myself. Uh, well, that doesn't come to my mind. I mean, I'm, I have fun. I really have fun. I'm really having fun while racing. Uh, I love this. Uh, and so I only have positive vibes. Then maybe I'm falling down. Uh, something goes wrong and then I start thinking about it. I start thinking about dangers, but uh, uh, honestly, uh, I'm not too much influenced from that. Last weekend on Saturday, I fell down um, while racing. I got a bit hurt. It was not too bad, but still. However, the next day we had another race, so what was I supposed to do? I couldn't think about it. I couldn't think about dangers because even the next day I got up and I wanted to win. So uh, since I, to, to some extent, I don't want to think about it and I don't, and I don't think about it. So what about your parents? I mean, uh, I can perhaps understand it better than you. Uh, parents can see uh, 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 their children going fast, uh, 360 kilometers between uh, uh, Marquez, uh, Martinez, and Bagnaia. And maybe they are very worried. Maybe one day you're going to have a child. Will you encourage your child to uh, enter the world of racing? Or maybe will you keep him far away? Well, my mother is here, so maybe you can ask her this question. I asked her before, and uh, she, she is really very afraid. Well, I imagine that my parents are afraid. In any case, my mom and dad uh, have never prevented me from doing what I really like. They have uh, neither pushed nor prevented me from doing that. Uh, they let me do in what I like doing, and I think this is the best uh, thing to do, and this is what I'm going to do uh, if I have a child. If my child wants to, uh, to, to race, uh, well, <laughs> I'm not going to be too happy because it's going to be a, a problem to some extent because it can get hurt. It takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of energy, effort. Uh, but if he wants to do it, why not? I mean, he has to do what he likes to do. I do agree, especially especially he will have the same feelings and the same success that you are having right now and that we can show you in this video. Thank you very much to Sky, Ladorna, Guido Meda, and Massimo Battiston for giving us the rights to show this video. Tutti quanti eravamo almeno 20, almeno 20 E ho paura che sia tardi Se la vita è un lampo io non l'ho visto Se non l'avevo messo in conto Che se il vento è forte ci spinge all'arco Un'amicizia che si addormenta Una parola detta troppo in fretta Ti aspetti di arrivare in fondo Trovare spazio in questo inferno La famosa Ducati con la pipa Dove sono finiti tutti quanti Siete qui davanti Qui davanti Potremmo stringerci più forte E non sentirci mai più soli Si prende bene Nuvola rossa vince Bellissimo, bellissimo. Wonderful, spectacular images. And on top of that, you see two pilots that were fighting for the first position, the MotoGP, so the very best ones. But we saw the very two same uh, pilot com pilots competing, also playing table tennis. Well. I think about Federer and Nadal, 
who somehow were moved together when they decided to stop playing tennis. So these images are extraordinary, they are second or third. Yes, I'm third. But then when you really chase Paco from a close, are we still going to see those beautiful friendship images? Yes or no? Well, now he's ahead of me, so for him maybe it's easier, but well, if one day I'm going to, I'm going to beat him often and, uh, and, you know, often maybe he will somehow not like it, but we are adults, we are pretty mature, I think we are able to remain friends and, well, we also need to somehow sort of uh, cohabit, but we get along very well, as you see from the images. I mean, on and off the track, we get along very, very well. Of course, we compete, but somehow competition helps us because, uh, well, if you have something to tell each other, well, we can clear things up very easily because we're always together. Well, at the beginning, you started with uh, number 12. You also have a tattoo with number 12, and then the 12 became 72. Why? Why did you change number? Well, I was born on the 12th, so, and then, well, number one and two, are very special in my family. So my sisters and my mother were born on days, either with one, either with two. So 12 was including all these key numbers for my family. But then when I went to Malta two, well, 12 was already taken. And so I thought, hmm, which number shall I choose? So seven, that is close to one in terms of shape and so I decided to switch to 72 and then I kept it because I started winning. Are you, you know, sort of superstitious? Do you have rituals? And well, legend says that Valentino Rossi used to not to change uh, underwear before and during the race weekends. Well, yeah, sometimes I'm superstitious, but I wouldn't say that I'm superstitious. I have little rituals where I change underwear <laughs> regularly, <laughs> regardless of. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. Well, I change underwear with no problems and don't think that my success or failure depends on underwear. Well, let's say that I have rituals. I like rituals more because if I don't stick to my rituals, maybe, well, that gives me some sort of self-assurance. So if something goes wrong and I did my ritual, I try to think about the cause. But instead, if I do not stick to my rituals and then something goes wrong, I think, oh, it's because I didn't follow my ritual. So that's why I follow my rituals so that if something goes wrong, I know that uh, it's not because uh, I didn't follow the ritual. So, okay, I understand this little obsessive sort of, uh, you know, behavior, but you always uh, seem to be so a sort of uh, instinct based in your way of driving, but instead you are extremely meticulous. When we follow you in the paddock, uh, we see you with uh, electronic engineers, uh, telemetry experts, uh, uh, talking about the data coming from, uh, you know, data processing. So what's the weight of talent? What's the weight of, you know, careful, you know careful study and analysis. Well, this is my second year in MotoGP, and I must say that over the last few years, uh, things have changed, and I've seen that from a close. I've seen that it's very important to work properly in the paddock. There's a lot to be done. I mean, unfortunately, it's not just about driving the motorbike. There's much more than that. It's extremely very important to, have, to get along well with the rest of the team, to try to fix every little detail. Uh, watching at telemetry, but also 
trying to be good at explaining your feelings while, while you dry and also try to express what you need to go faster, to better use the tires, uh, try to be better than the others, in other words. So this is pretty crucial and essential. It's not easy, but it's also interesting. Well, and there it is about friendship too, because, well, there are eight Ducati motorbikes joining the MotoGP, and there's full, full sharing of all uh, data acquired by all motorbikes. So pilots can somehow copycat uh, each other and share and discuss. Well, Peko and you, you are faster than the others, and so maybe the others can still somehow use your data. Well, m my take on this is this. Okay, if I drive fast and the others uh, watch my my data, well, okay, it's okay, but still I don't like it 100%. But, you know, you can always learn from the others. Even if you are the fastest and best pilot ever, you can always learn. Every day is a school day, so there's always going to be somebody who's going to be better than you at something. That's why it's important for Ducati and for us pilots to keep learning. And uh, so this is a very important aspect. Uh, and this sharing is positive because you can really get inspiration and learn from uh, the technical point of view in order to find uh, different and alternative solutions to reach your goal that is always the same for everybody winning and also you can really learn from other driving styles and i, I think about pecco everybody's looking at him and uh, well uh, it's not just about being copied uh, because but it's not enough to watch at a pilot to be like him but again, you can also be proud if people look at you. And I think that Peko is happy to be considered as a role model. I hope that one day I'll be a role model too. Well, you got, uh, you know, the motorbike uh, driving license. <laughs> do you use it on the road? Which kind of motorbike do you have? And where do you like to go? Okay, so I have a Ducati. Well, not yet, but I'm going to get it soon. And uh, in 2020 with Moto2, I also won the Triumph. This is my own. I have it home. And recently I used it. And well, I travel around. Uh, I don't do big things, not big traveling. But well, I went out with my friends. I hang out. It was fun. And also we stopped uh, at a motorbike uh, place, uh, a motorbiker's place. I was all covered, but when I t took my helmet off, well, people were, oh my gosh, uh, surprised. Uh, and uh, maybe if you were to go past that bar with your moped, uh, nobody would even notice you, but now you are a super bass. Well, now my moped uh, it's full of stickers and so it's easy to recognize me and also the front wheel never touches the ground oh yeah i know i like that and when it comes to you know tourist motorbiking we have three beautiful passes connecting emilia romagna with tuscany well apart from this what's the current uh, road network condition after the flooding. Well, the floodings uh, provoked a huge damage, in particular on our hills, our Apennines. Fortunately, the coastline was not affected by the floodings, but unfortunately instead, uh, on the Bolognese and uh, Romagna hills, so the provinces of uh, Foglie, Cesena, and Ravenna, and a little bit less the province of Rimini, uh, were heavily affected. Uh, 700 roads are partially or entirely interrupted. 
because of this. General Figliolo, who is going to join the session here this afternoon, has finally unblocked the first resources that uh, will provide uh, provinces and municipalities that were affected uh, with uh, the suitable amount of uh, money to keep uh, restoring uh, these uh, roads. Well, they had to use uh, resources to provide for, you know, the top priorities, but now uh, they have uh, no more funds. But fortunately, so the first uh, financing have been unblocked to allow provinces and municipalities uh, have uh, the necessary resources to fix uh, the road network uh, before the winter because, uh, I mean, uh, we need to fix, uh, you know, the, the, the source of the river dams uh, and, uh, sorry, the, the, the river banks uh, and the roads uh, before the winter starts uh, because, uh, I mean, uh, that would be even too dangerous. We need to guarantee the safety of our lands, of our territories. So finally, it seems that uh, a first uh, sort of uh, amount of money has been unblocked, uh, even though, I mean, it, it's not enough yet, but it's important to start. Especially, we have beautiful hills, beautiful roads uh, on those hills that motorbikers love because we have, uh, you know, all kinds of bikers being passionate about our landscape not just the cyclists, but also motor bikers uh, who come here to visit uh, our uh, region and our areas uh, by traveling these beautiful winding roads. Uh, and so again, Romagna will start uh, working very, very hard to fix the road network just in time before the winter. So this is an extraordinary region where Ducati was established and uh, we have this great uh, pilot from Rimini and uh, this is an incredible connection. Well, can we say that maybe, I mean, there is uh, a sort of uh, X factor. So you drove with uh, a Triumph engines uh, with uh, KTM uh, sort of equipment, but now there seems to be a magic cocktail now that you drive for Ducati. Well, I don't know, but Ducati did an incredible job, especially over the last few years. And I've joined Ducati over the last two years, and personally, I must say that I found uh, a fantastic team uh, on top of the bike that is great, it's awesome and goes very well, but the team really struck me. The people from Ducati, not just the ones working with me, but also the other Ducati people working or the other teams and I mean the other pilots, is great. A great level of support also to the technicians, it's great because there's such a, I mean, a willingness to, to win and they, they do anything they can and this is uh, beautiful, this is uh, absolutely terrific. And uh, to me, it is as a great value because I really like the human factor. And fortunately, the motorbike is very fast uh, and works wonderfully. And uh, I immediately connected uh, with the motorbike and so everything is going for the best. So you talked about the human factor. Okay, your motorbike is very fast. It's not exactly the same uh, motorbike as the the one that Peko Banyaya drives. Uh, so I know that is not a perfect replica. I know that uh, you have uh, a top rider technical treatment, and this is a fact, but also it's not a question I say so, when it comes to the relations that you have with your team, well, sometimes that uh, is much uh, 
more important than a beautiful Desmo Sedici with more, han more than 300 horsepower. So maybe this is more important than uh, co connecting rods uh, and other mechanical elements. Uh, so I think that if you were to uh, write the fact of uh, having the possibility to ride an official motorbike is important, but this is as important as the human relations that you were able to establish. So, I mean, I think that uh, you deserve a round of applause for this great uh, human gift that you have. And when it comes to relations, I mean, do you have a girlfriend? No, not anymore, unfortunately. But you have a lovely dog. Yes, now he is my companion. Companion Rubik is the dog's name. Why? Because I love the Rubik's Cube. Is the dog smart? Certainly more than me. My dog is smarter than me. Yes, that's why I named him after the famous toy. Not many people know that when they travel along the A13 motorway, if you see counter drones, well, sometimes there are younger talents growing up, uh, like uh, Valentino Rossi, Peco Bagnaia, Marco Bezzecchi, Luca Marini. Okay, the strongest future pilots in the world are just next to the A14 motorway. This is just uh, an additional proof of uh, the strict connection between this land uh, and uh, the motorbike. So what do you do? Do you go to the gym and that's it? Or do you also have fun uh, with the motorbikes? Okay, I can't tell you exactly what I do in my free time. Of course, we train in the gym. This is very important. It has become extremely important to be to be fit, to be stronger because the bikes are fast, are bigger, and they break harder. So they do everything better. So you need to to be as strong as them to drive them properly. So you need to train in the gym. And on top of that, there is the motorsport part. So the ranch uh, activities or Misano track activity or go-karts, everything that has an engine, that has a motor. And this is also fun because uh, spending every day in the gym could be also pretty hard. But then especially in the summertime when it's uh, hot and so you can uh, drive outdoor often. Well, sometimes we skip uh, a couple of days in the gym and we train on the track. And uh, what about using go-karts or maybe Yamaha R1? No, no, never ever Yamaha with the Ducati or the Padigale or when you train at the ranch where you do something completely different because they use a flat track uh, uh, motorbikes that can be uh, driven, I mean, uh, on on the land directly. So what's the kind of spirit that drives you? Well, it depends. Uh, I mean, uh, we have our own talents. Luca Marin uh, is very strong at the range when we do range activities. Well, he has been the fastest over the last year. We are getting closer, but I don't know. He was able to find a way to perfectly drive there, to be the fastest. In Misano, on the Misano track, well, this is a similar situation compared to the other MotoGP tracks. Sometimes it's me, sometimes the fastest is Peco or Gianfranco, it depends. So we alternate, let's say. And with the Mini GP, Icele is very, very fast. It's, uh, almost always the fastest, but where are you training? Can we say it? Well, I would like to tell it to you, but we always change our mind. Yes, we try to go not too far because, well, it's tiring. It depends. Sometimes we go far. It depends on what we want to do. And what about Vale? 
Does he come to play with you or not? Or has he stopped driving? Oh, yeah, yeah, he comes along. Well, he's the owner of the ranch, so he needs to be there. Otherwise, the gates are not opened. Yes, he comes along, he trains with us, and he always likes winning. He likes winning, and he also keeps our motivation high because he's always very fast. And then when it comes to the gym sessions, he does something different. He's driving cars, so his training is different. But we see him very often. And what if? What if uh, you didn't come across uh, VR46? Uh, if you hadn't become a pilot, what would you have done? Well, probably I would have become a mechanic because uh, I have worked with my dad in the workshop. I always loved mechanics. And before, uh, you know, wanting to be a pilot, I wanted to be a mechanic. I know that your grandpa used to restore um, motorbikes, oh yes, in his free time. So what have you done this summer? So what about the falling silver storm? Are you okay now? What about the shoulder? You don't like the warm weather. Did you go to the North Pole, to the mountains? I'm okay. My shoulders are pretty fine, pretty good. Yes, I recovered. Ah, the fall was not very, very harsh. Fortunately, it was nothing serious. Okay, let's talk about this summer. Yes, I don't like particularly the beach and the hot weather. I prefer cold weather and the mountains. So I stayed home to spend some time with my family and my friends because otherwise I don't see them very much. And then I had a little bit of fun. I'm a, I'm a normal guy, but then uh, we had to start training again, so I prefer the winter break uh, to go on holiday. So was it too hot today? Oh yeah, and uh, you put a, a jacket on in order to be able to join uh, the uh, session with uh, President Mattarella. I know that uh, you were slightly late and uh, the president uh, had already arrived uh, with the police and uh, you had to go through. I didn't know that uh, amidst that group of people there was the president. Uh, I'm very sorry. I didn't want to be rude. I had uh, to make uh, a move that was not, I mean, the best one, but I didn't know that there was a president, otherwise I, I would have not done it. So I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you very much, Marco. Thanks, all of you. I'd like to thank Andrea Corsini, the councillor, for being with us today. And uh, I would like simply to remind you that uh, there are Dona Ora Donate Now desks. Uh, Please do not hesitate to donate in order to support the meeting. And, uh, and I hope to see all these Bezzecchi supporters in Milano for the MotoGP race during the 8 to 10 September weekend. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Civiltà dell'amore.
fratelli e sorelle, costruite senza stancarvi mai questa civiltà. Lavorate per questo, pregate per questo, soffrite per questo. religioso o l'esperienza religiosa è innanzitutto un fatto, un fenomeno obiettivo, un fatto reale, non è un'idea, innanzitutto non è un modo di sentire, non solo si tratta di un fatto, di un avvenimento, ma del fatto più imponente e più inestirpabile della storia dell'uomo più imponente più vasto che neanche il fenomeno dell'amore dell'uomo e della donna che neanche il fenomeno del rapporto tra genitori e figli perché il senso religioso è un avvenimento che pone, che afferma o che ricerca l'orizzonte entro il quale acquisti senso anche il rapporto tra l'uomo e la donna, anche il rapporto tra genitori e figli. Perciò è più vasto, perfino di quelli. Thank <laughs> you. 